basic question that I always get, well, what exactly is a strength? Like, what does that mean? And a strength is an action or a thought that comes kind of naturally to you. And it's something that you look forward to, something you're energized by, something you would love to learn more about. And it is, so they're verbs. So strengths, the way that I'm defining them, these are verbs. So these are things like creating, um, organizing, spreadsheeting. I know that's not a, a verb, but I do like to spreadsheet, so I'm making it a verb. Um, you know, these are actions that you are taking. And they are more of a state versus a trait. And so what I mean by that is that it doesn't necessarily, not necessarily, it doesn't change really day after day or week after week. These are things that are inherent to you that are probably a combination of maybe some percentage of genes, some percentage of history, experience, you know, such culture, just a myriad of different things that has brought you to where you are right now as a mature adult. And there are, so you've got the state, and then you've got skills and knowledge. And this is something that people sometimes get confused by, so I just wanna highlight it. So you could learn a new skill. You could learn, you can gain additional knowledge on a topic but it doesn't mean that it's a strength of yours. So simple example, Shane brought up um, PowerPoint. So, you know, Shane might learn how to put together PowerPoint slides because he needs to, but it doesn't mean even if he's really good at it, that it's a strength of his. It may not be something that he is going to look forward to. Maybe he likes more of that whiteboarding type of thing and not going in and worrying about formatting and um, putting in a picture and those kinds of things. So that hopefully clarifies a little bit about what a strength is. One other distinction is that strengths are not necessarily the items that you are best at. So what I mean by that is that just because you're good at something, it doesn't mean that it's a strength of yours. So for example, I'm great. I'm like a master organizer and scheduler. And you know, I, I it just, it's, it's a no brainer for me. Is that a strength of mine? Definitely not. I absolutely hate that. Like I, I would love to just, I outsource as much of that as I can, because even though I'm good at it, it is not something that, that energizes me. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, the number one struggle. The number one struggle that I see in people as they are starting to use their strengths is something that we can thank mother nature for. And that is the inherent negativity bias that we are born with. And there was a reason they say, for this negativity bias, because in evolutionary, evolutionary survival purposes, we needed to focus on what was wrong in our environment. What was wrong with me if I'm not running fast enough, you know, if I'm the last one of the pack running, then I need to improve that so that I am not attacked and so I survive. And our brains have not evolved to the same, at the same pace as our society, you know? So we may think we're all sophisticated, but, you know, but really what's going on in here hasn't changed that much over the years. And so we have to really intentionally get over that negativity bias. And how that plays out in strengths is that people tend to focus on their weaknesses. And then they try to improve their weaknesses. So let's say, you, you know, you're not a great public presenter and, 
but you want to be better at it. You know, somebody else in your office is great at it and you think it would really help you. And so you work at it. Maybe you go to Toastmasters, maybe you take an online class, maybe you record yourself, you know, you're working and you're working and you're working at it and you would make incremental improvements for sure. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be improving our weaknesses, but I will say that if you spent that same amount of time on a strength of yours, you would make progress by leaps and bounds. The way I like to explain it is if you think about a tree, you've got these major branches that come out of it. And each of your strengths is like one of those really solid branches that are coming out of the tree. And then every time you build a skill, every time you work at it, you get this little offshoot of additional tree branches on it, which only makes that strength even stronger for you. Versus focusing in on a weakness does not give you that same payoff. So the main takeaway around strengths is that I want you to include more of those strengthening activities in your everyday life and at work. The other takeaway is that these are unique to you. And unfortunately, we don't necessarily value something that comes easy to us. We tend to think that if we focus on something we're not as good at and work really hard at it, that incremental change is amazing. Woo! But actually, if we're working on our strengths and we make huge improvements, value that. So get over that negativity bias in the brain and value your unique strengths. Okay. Step one is identify your strengths. How do you know that an action is a strength of yours? I get asked that as well. And so I have a, a little cheat sheet for you. So this is called look for the signs. So you will know that an action is a strength of yours if you meet these criteria. S is for success. When you do it, you feel effective. Maybe you've heard from other people that you kind of have a gift for this. You may have earned some sort of recognition for that activity. Instinct is the I. So before you do it, you kind of look forward to it. Like for me and the spreadsheets, and I say kind of because I actually do look forward to it, but I get made fun of sometimes because of my love of spreadsheets and Greta, you know who I'm talking about here. Um, but I look forward to it. And so I do volunteer for that activity. And it is a, these type of strengthening activities, when you check in with yourself, you'll get this kind of like, you're, it's like the opposite of having butterflies in your gut. It's more like a, yeah, like I got this. The G is for growth. And while you're doing it, you kind of feel curious. You feel inquisitive. You feel focused. You're more likely to go into that flow state. I'll continue with my nerdy example of the spreadsheet, but I like to learn formulas. And so if I can't figure something out, I might, you know, go to the help and I want to learn something. And so that is where that growth. So if you want to learn about something, it is an indicator that that might be surrounding a strength of yours. N is for needs. And so it satisfies some kind of need of yours. After you've done it, you feel fulfilled. You feel like it was you, that it was authentic and you get some sort of satisfaction from it. Other people may not understand it, but you get some satisfaction for it. I was leading a workshop for a, a strength-based workshop yesterday for a leadership team of three, and one person 
hates to do kind of that iterative back and forth, like after the idea is done, he does not like to then go back and forth with other people and make those incremental changes, which you really need to do in order to have a final product. But that is so draining for him. But then he found out that somebody else on his team loves that process. And she doesn't like that initial step of like that white space that does not work for her. And so that's the way where he could not understand how she could enjoy it. And she couldn't understand how he could enjoy just that white space. But, and that's where that uniqueness to you comes in. All right, well now it is your turn. So pull out your journal and start jotting down, if you haven't already, what are some of those activities that you think might be your strengths? So is this from the list from the test or just generically we're supposed to list? This is generically. Yeah, this is okay, okay. to do with the assessment. The assessment okay. will give you your, your top two strength roles, but it doesn't actually identify your strengths until you like you go through it and you pick out those verbs. So you don't, okay. you don't need that for this. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. So, and as you're thinking about this, um, I compiled, a, I have a whole list of different ones in case you are stuck. So you guys go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go get my like 100 different verbs and activities that I have and I will start sharing those and be right back. 